This is a bold concept from Soviet automakers, the Gasse era, known for its unusual streamlined design. And here we have the ZIS-112 designed for racing. Today you will learn about unique projects of the Soviet automotive industry. Limited production runs of various experimental conceptual cars with striking exteriors. You'll also discover how the automotive industry in the USSR began to take shape. Enjoy the show! Nami 1 This car is often referred to as the first passenger car in the USSR. Although the Nami 1, which came to life through small-scale assembly, is more accurately considered a prototype. And for a first attempt, it turned out quite well. What's admirable is the development process itself. Nami 1 wasn't a licensed or, as was more common, unlicensed copy of a foreign counterpart. Instead, it represented a creative interpretation of the technical and engineering trends of the era. Another advantage of Nami 1 was its suitability for use in the USSR. It had a huge 26cm ground clearance, a curb weight of almost half a ton, which provided good off-road capabilities, and a simple design, evident for example in the absence of a differential, an air-cooled engine and the complete absence of gauges on the early models. Despite its solid foundation, Nami 1 lacked the finesse of engineering refinement. It was this circumstance, as well as difficulties in preparing for mass production, that stood in the way of this interesting car. The USSR decided to embark on automotive production through collaboration with the American Ford Motor Company. As for Nami 1, after a few hundred semi-artisanal examples were produced, it found its way into museums and archives. Gaz A Aero In the early 1930s, aerodynamics in the automotive industry was just getting up and taking its first tentative steps. But just look at these shapes and relate them to the year of production. The car was manufactured in 1932 and it was truly ahead of its time. It's so gratifying that the development of the automotive industry has contributions from Soviet talent. In essence, the Gas A Aero, designed by Moscow engineer Alexei Nikitin, featured an exquisite aerodynamic body placed on the chassis of the standard Gas A. The result was not just an unusual and attractive car. All the main features of the A Aero, such as integrated headlights, enclosed rear wheel arches, and an extended keel, work to reduce frontal drag. And they work not just in theory, but in practice as well. During tests, the A Aero concept car, to put it mildly, astonished onlookers by reducing fuel consumption by a quarter and increasing the maximum speed by almost 30 km per hour compared to the base Geysik. Unfortunately, this wonderful aerodynamic story didn't have a sequel. The A Aero itself disappeared without a trace. Nami 013 This was already a full-fledged concept car. Its visionary creator was Yuri Dolmatovsky, the brother of the Soviet poet Yevgeny Dolmatovsky. Not only an engineer, but also a designer, journalist, and one of the most well-known promoters of automobiles in the USSR, Yuri Aronovich began pondering the benefits of a wagon layout as early as the late 1940s. It was with his involvement that the development of the first Soviet passenger minivan began. The Nami 013 concept car, as is often said today, was ahead of its time. Indeed, rear engine layout, 5 meters in length, 3 rows of seats and the driver sitting in front of the front axle, this was a breakthrough, no matter how you look at it. Unfortunately, Dolmatovsky's enthusiasm, which even received approval in the pages of foreign automotive press, didn't find support from higher authorities. The project didn't progress beyond the single prototype, and even that was scrapped in 1954. Seven years later, in the United States, the iconic rear-wheel drive rear-engine minivan Chevrolet Corvair Greenbrier made its debut, ideologically very similar to Dolmatovsky's creation. Soviet scientists tried to create racing cars, and what came out of it, you will find out next. ZIS-112 This handsome is not a pure concept car, but rather a racing car based on the ZIS-110 chassis. However, even in the very specific linear races, such as paired races covering several hundred kilometers on regular roads, which were held on highways, the ZIS-112 didn't demonstrate outstanding results. Nevertheless, it was the perfect car to show, if not superiority, at least parity in the race between the Soviet Union and the United States. Valentin Roskov's creation can be accused of imitating the conceptual Buick Le Sabre. However, both cars emerged almost simultaneously and there are differences between them, which is what makes them both great. But what set the ZIS-112 apart was its truly Russian grandeur. Almost 6 meters in length, a formidable cyclops headlight in the center, 
Moustaches growing from the front fenders and extending onto the powerful sides of the front wings. It was cool. And not just in terms of design. In the most advanced version, the inline 8-cylinder dream car engine produced nearly 200 horsepower and, according to contemporaries, reached a top speed of almost 200 km per hour. Unfortunately, this car lacked one cool factor – popularity. It was only produced in five copies, none of which sadly have survived. Belka. After the failure with the Nami 013, Yuri Dolmatovsky didn't give up on the monospace layout. When the leadership of the Urbit motorcycle plant considered producing a passenger car on their premises, Nami's leadership once again began promoting the idea of a compact monospace. This time it was genuinely compact, less than 3.5 meters in length and with a curb weight of about half a ton. Despite its size, this microvent named Belka Squirrel had a full five-seat interior and its 700 cubic centimeter motorcycle engine produced just 20 horsepower. However, given its low weight, this was sufficient for city travel. Additionally, the Belka was elegant and in a good way futuristic. Just consider the front part of the cabin that tilted forward for access. However, the well-thought-out design aimed at mass production remained a concept. The plans to build cars in Urbit were abandoned and Belka didn't get a second chance. In the end, the decision was made to create a new small displacement rear-engine car based on the Fiat 600 body with an automotive four-cylinder engine, and the Nami 050 experimental models were destroyed. The next car has a complex and mysterious name, but it looks very cool. Vnite PT. You might find it amusing, but even after the second failure with the monospace car, Yuri Dolmatovsky didn't give up. Yuri Aronovich infected the specialists at the All Union Scientific Research Institute of Technical Aesthetics, VNITA, with the absolutely sound idea of adapting a monospace for taxi use. Using the experience of operating taxis based on the regular Gus 21 Volga and methodically eliminating all its inherent flaws, Dolmatovsky presented the project of the prospective taxi. Needless to say, it was a monospace. The driver sat in front of the front axle and the engine was located near the front wheels, meaning it was in the rear. Additionally, the Vnita PT received a fiberglass body, the prospects of which at that time seemed limitless. Equally revolutionary was the sliding door on the right and the huge, by the standards of the time, interior space, where passengers could sit with their legs crossed. Other advantages of the car included excellent visibility and ease of active use such as easy body washing and cabin cleaning, which were crucial for taxis. Finally, the 50 horsepower Moskvich engine provided a reasonable top speed of 100 km per hour, suitable for city taxis. Unfortunately, as in previous cases, Dolmatovsky's work was praised but not pursued further. The next car in today's terms would have immense cultural value, because its appearance is truly imaginative. Moskvich for OA Tourist the development of such a beauty only began after receiving an order from abroad. According to the official version, the Moskvich 408 with a removable hot top was developed at the request of the European importer of Soviet cars, Skaldia Volga. The Belgian company hoped to generate interest in the export of regular 408 models with such a car. The convertible was created from the sedan in the simplest way, by cutting away all unnecessary parts. Fortunately, the engineers didn't stop at just removing the roof. The body was reinforced, unnecessary rear doors were removed, and the front ones were made frameless. Moreover, one of the two prototypes built received aluminum body panels and even an engine with a fuel injection system. But most importantly, of course, was the design. The Moskvich 408 itself was exceptionally beautiful and the Tourist was an embodiment of the 1970s style. One of the most elegant cars in the USSR sadly never made it to serial production. The experimental model was essentially forgotten for many years, but in our paradoxically nostalgic times, several replicas of the tourist have been built. Only one was professionally made in Evgeny Shamansky's workshop. It's fortunate that alongside old photos, this car still exists. Next, you'll learn about the first electric car in the Soviet Union, Vos 1801 Pony. A lightweight open car resembling a golf cart or dune buggy developed for the 1980 Olympics stood out with its attractive appearance and unconventional engineering solutions. It's enough to say that the Pony was an electric car. The body was made of fiberglass. Vars 1801 had two nickel-zinc batteries, each weighing 180 kilograms. 
One was located in the front section and the other in the rear. The range was 110 to 120 km at a speed of 40 km per hour. But ultimately, this regular visitor to Soviet car showrooms remained just an interesting project. A contract was planned for the supply of VAS-1801 with French batteries for the maintenance services of the channel tunnel construction. But there was no opportunity to quickly set up electric car production at the car factory. It's a shame that such an interesting and promising project didn't find its place in the automotive world. Okta Nami The Nami Okta model was produced in 1987 in a single exemplar. The car featured a seven-seat interior and its design allowed it to transform into a two-seat van. The seats were arranged in three rows, and the interior could also be organized as a dining and sleeping area. Created by DIY enthusiasts Gennady Hainov and Dmitry Parthenov, the Okta was more than just a luxurious aerodynamic body. It also had a flat floor in the cabin, an active spoiler, and most importantly, a data bus for communication. For the late 80s, multiplexing was cutting-edge technology. However, there was nothing particularly unique in terms of its mechanics. It used components from the VAS-8. In the late 1980s, this car had a very futuristic appearance. At the time, the Okta was quite popular and participated in many exhibitions. However, in the 1990s, customs officials didn't allow the car to enter Russia from abroad. Currently, the remnants of the Okta are in the possession of Dmitry Parthenov, and its future remains unknown. The next car is one of the most famous in the world of Soviet automotive industry. Many elderly people have it stored in garages, collecting dust, while younger enthusiasts turn it into drift machines. VAS-2106 Pickup the VAS-2106 became iconic in the post-Soviet space. There are numerous projects aimed at improving these cars, ranging from the stance culture where cars are lowered, fitted with cool wheels and equipped with impressive sound systems to true drift cars, often used in winter. But you might be surprised by the factory version of the good old 6. The VAS-2106 pickup with the straightforward name Tourist was produced in the autumn of 1981 at the suggestion of the plant's technical director Farshatov. Inside its two-door body there was a folding tent. They even considered setting up small-scale production, but ended up with just a single prototype. Such an astonishing project was unlikely to gain mass popularity. For some reason, pickups simply didn't catch on in the post-Soviet space. Perhaps considering this, the plant's management decided to cancel the production of such vehicles. S1L Motorized Wheelchair In the Soviet Union, efforts were made to care for people with disabilities in various ways. Separate cars were even developed for them. For example, the well-known Invalidka. It's an extraordinary vehicle, but we won't focus on it right now. Three-wheeled cars were made by several companies at different times worldwide, and the Serpukhov motorcycle plant also left its mark in this area. The S1L motorized wheelchair had an engine with just 4 horsepower, a top speed of 30 km per hour, and sometimes struggled on steep inclines. This unimpressive and, by the way, very unreliable wonder was produced in the USSR from 1952 to 1956 for disabled individuals. It's not surprising that this car didn't gain popularity and wasn't produced in large quantities. The vehicle looks like a go-kart and its power unit resembles a lawnmower. Although people with disabilities don't need greater power, the convenience of using this car can easily be questioned. It's worth noting that the Soviet Union had many promising automotive projects. Today you've learned about just a few of the inventions by Soviet scientists. However, even these cars are truly mind-boggling. It's intriguing to imagine what would have happened if all these technical wonders had continued to evolve to the present day.